Located in the center of the loop, currently at 440 South Lasaya Street, and formerly at the intersection of Washington and Lasaya Street, the old Chicago Stock Exchange building was built in 1894, which was 12 years after the Stock Exchange was first established in the city. The original 13-story metal frame building was designed by Dankmar Alder and Louis Henry Sullivan. This was completed shortly after the World's Columbian Exposition. Unlike the vast majority of stock exchange buildings built in Europe and the U.S. at that time, the Chicago Stock Exchange building was defined of Beaux-Art neoclassicism, championed by the likes of Daniel Burnham. Sullivan and Adler designed the building in a style that aimed to be distinctly American, a style today known as Chicago 19th century commercial. Sullivan's unique usage of abstract floral designs to decorate commercial buildings started a Midwestern American version of French Art Nouveau. This was Sullivan's style. It is best expressed by Sullivan's motto, form ever follows function. The shape of a building should be primarily related to its intended usage and architectural ornamentation should follow as a garment of poetic imagery. Sullivan advocated for a new kind of architecture, one that used nature to offset commercialism. This was done by making the ornaments integral to the building. While the stock exchange has been operational since its inception, the building has not. In the late 1960s, the building was targeted for demolition and was unsuccessful in its preservation battle. After it was demolished in 1972, the Chicago Stock Exchange moved from its former location, 30 North Lasaya Street, to its current location, 440 South Lasaya Street. A few architectural fragments still survive today. The original entrance has been standing outside the new wing of the Art Institute since the late 70s. The imposing arch is made with molded terracotta pieces and enclosed the first three stories of the building. It features swirling geometric forms and echoes of natural shapes and sizes. Ironically, the relocation of the arch as a freestanding structure has led to comparisons with the triumphal arches of ancient Rome. This is ironic as triumphal arches have a connotation of success, whether it comes from a successful military general or a reminder of state power. The Stock Exchange Arch is in stark contrast to the Arch of Constantine, a triumphal arch erected by the Roman Senate to commemorate Constantine's victory at the Battle of Milvian Bridge. One demonstrates ruins, disappointment, failure. The other was a celebration and symbolizes victory and triumph. Sections of the trading room, which were once at the center of U.S. finance, were also salvaged and used for the reconstruction of the room in the Art Institute. The double height space occupied an area of 70 by 100 feet, extending through the second and third floor of the building, and was finished with Sullivan's lush organic ornamentation and stenciled patterns in marble, mahogany, red oak, and mosaic. Historical preservationist and photographer Richard Nichol was the most outspoken preservationist of the stock exchange. Sadly, he died in 1972 while attempting to salvage items from the neglected building. The threat of demolition urged many citizens to take action and fight for its preservation. The building was demolished, yet its destruction was not in vain. A martyr to the cause of preservation. Through its demolition, the Chicago Stock Exchange Building paved the way for the creation of the Landmark Council of Illinois. Its legacy is forever intertwined with the public policy for preservation and protection for historic buildings in America.